All right, take your Bibles and turn to um, John chapter uh, uh, John chapter nineteen, and we are in verse um, let's pick up at verse uh, sixteen. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of the skull, which is called in the Hebrew, Galgotha. Did I talk about bearing the cross last week? Bearing the cross. Okay. You bear your cross till you get to the place of death. Christ set that example for us. He takes the cross on. And he bears his cross, and some will help you bear the cross. They take Simon, and he even helps the Lord bear his cross. The Bible says, bear ye one another's burdens, right? You have to bear your crosses, but there will always be some that God will send along to help you bear your cross. But how long do you bear your cross? Till you get to the place of your death. And the Christians don't like to study cross-bearing. But cross-bearing is part of the Christian life. Take your Bible and turn to uh, Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. And uh, look at verse... uh, Matthew chapter 10. And look at verse 38. Matthew 10, 38. says, uh, and he that taketh not his what? Cross. And followeth after me is not worthy of me. Now, he's, he, Christ practices what he preaches. He bore his cross. He took a cross. He's prophesying and he says, you're going to have to take your cross. Now look at uh, Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. It says, Then said Jesus unto His disciples, If any man will come after Me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow Me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for My sake shall find it. And you say, how long do I have to bear my cross? Well, you're going to have to bear your cross right to the end. Right up to the end of your life. We're to bear our crosses. And, uh, and the Lord will give you a cross, and everybody's cross will be different. Everybody's cross is different. Uh, it's not the same thing. You say, say, what's a cross? It's a burden that the Lord's given you to bear. It's a burden that the Lord's given you to bear. And that's your cross. And uh, a lot of Christians, they spend more time trying to get out from under their cross than they do, than they spend bearing their cross. But uh, it tells us he bore his cross right up to the place of a skull, Golgotha. They call that the place of the skull because of the way the mountain looks from Stan Andrews. And they look across and they say it looks like a skull. It's a mountain that looks like a skull. They call it the place of the skull. Which is called in the Hebrew, Golgotha. Verse 18, where they crucified him and two others with him on either side and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross and the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Now, if you take and get that title in all four Gospels, none of them contradict, but they don't always give the full subscription. The full subscription would be, this is Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. That's, a, that's what he wrote on there. Verse 20, This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, as written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Um, Dr. Ruppman says that typifies the three races. Hebrew would be Shem, 
Um, Greek would be Japheth, and Latin, he says, comes actually comes from Africa. I'm not sure about that one. I don't know how to verify that. But he says that's that Latin would be Ham. Now, uh, I would like it if somebody that knows languages could verify whether or not that's true to me. True. But if that's the case, then that thing's written to be addressed to every race on earth. That's what it would be. Okay. Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. And uh, we studied Pilate in depth. We've already addressed that quite a few times. Pilate's attitude toward Christ and toward those he was talking about. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier apart, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, they parted my raiment among them, for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. Now, here once again is a fulfillment of prop- prophecy. This Psalms 22:18 is the scripture it's referring to. Uh, I should do a study here and show how many times it says the Scriptures was fulfilled through the book of John and the prophecies that the Lord filled. Uh, Look at uh, Psalms chapter 22, pick up verse 8. Psalms 22.8. I'm sorry, 22.18. They parted my garments among them, and cast lots upon my vesture. That's the prophecy that's being fulfilled here. Many times there's messianic prophecies all through the Psalms. Some of the Psalms are very heavy with it. Uh, Isaiah 53 is very heavily fulfilled with the cross. And, uh, and there's many other prophecies that are fulfilled. Um, uh, there's... I, I got to do a study on how many there is. I'm sure there's some people that's got them recorded, but how many prophecies was fulfilled during the time of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? But there's a huge amount of them that's fulfilled. Spirit of prophecy shows you something different about the Bible, and uh, I'll tell you if there if there isn't any other reason to have faith that this is the Word of God and to believe it. If you study the prophecies that's made in these Scriptures, even even without the um, typologies, and the typologies, there's a huge amount that's fulfilled. But with just putting the typologies aside, just the prophecies alone that's fulfilled, that was made hundreds of years before, that right there alone should make somebody step back and look at the Bible and say, this Bible, this book is unlike any other book. There, there's others that they write books and they say, oh, it's a book from, like the Koran, they say, oh, the Koran's from the Bible. But the, the only prophecies in the Koran that it makes is ones that hijacks from the Bible. There, there's no prophecies in it. Book of Mormon, there's no real prophecies in that thing. And, uh, and it sets the Bible apart, the prophecies that are fulfilled. Now, uh, looking at this garment, there's a type here. This uh, garment, it was woven from the top throughout. So somebody took that thing, that thing was all one piece of probably some type of knit or yarn where that thing was all one piece. And they couldn't divide it. It wasn't a garment that could be taken apart. It was all one thread that was woven about. 
and uh, they, they take and uh, strip them garments off the Lord and they cast lots for them. Now what's this a type of? Well, it's a type of God's garment. Take your Bible and turn to Hebrews chapter 1. Now, when you study God's garment, it's, crea- it's uh, the universe. It's creation. And it was made by God's fingers and God's hands. Look at Hebrews chapter 1. I'll give you some verses on God's garments and the universe. Book of Hebrews and uh, one chapter one. And let's look at verses one through twelve. Hebrews one one through twelve. God who at sundry times and diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days opened unto us by his son whom he hath appointed heir unto all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being in the, the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again when he bringeth in the uh, first begotten into the world, he saith, Let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels he saith, Who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire? But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest. They shall wax old as doth what? a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and this year shall not fail. So what is the uh, heavens and the earth? It's as a vesture that he's going to take off and he's going to fold. Now take your Bible and look, and that uh, vesture is hiding, uh, showing his glory. When he takes it off. Now take your Bible and look at Isaiah 51 6. Isaiah 51 6. Give you some verses on this and then I'm going to make a quick explanation. Bring it together. Isaiah 51 6. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath, for the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like what? A garment. Like a garment. Now look at, um, again, look at verse um, Psalms chapter 8, verse 3. Now his vesture that they cast lots for was woven with a hand, and it was all one piece. Look at uh, Psalms chapter 8. Psalms chapter 8. Verse uh, 3. Psalms 8, 3. When I consider thy heavens, the work of what? Thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. The work of his hands, there's the work of his fingers. Look at Psalms 104 2. Psalms 104 2. Who covers, covers what? Thyself with light as with a garment, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. So the Lord 
the universe is the Lord is um, God's garment. Uh, there's another verse I didn't write down that says he he's in the full uh, he's the fullness of the universe. I forget exactly how that th- word, verse is worded. Verse six also, though. Huh? Verse six: Thou coverest it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. Uh, Yes, as with the garments. That one would go with it too. Uh, look at... Now, you say, what, what does that mean? Well, if the universe is God's garment that kind of hides Himself, nobody can look at God and live, right? And He's taking that universe and He's hiding, hiding His glory in it. They took Jesus Christ and they took His garments off Him. They nailed him naked to a tree, showing his shame. Okay? You know one of these days, the Lord's going to take off his garment. And when he takes it off, he's going to judge the earth. It says that in Revelation chapter 22, it says the heaven and the earth fled away. He's going to take that thing off and he's going to fold it up. And then you're going to have the great white throne judgment and you're going to get to see Him in His glory. And the brightness of His glory. And, uh, and the ones that they took the garment off of and mocked is going to be sitting there and judging them. Can you imagine being them soldiers? Took them garments off of Him? Cast lots for Him? I was the Lord of glory whose real garment is the entire universe. He's going to take that garment off. He's going to fold it up. The Bible says there will be a new heaven and a new earth. He'll recreate it. God's going to change His clothes. He'll change His clothes. And that thing's a picture of that. Uh, They've taken that woven garment from top to bottom. It's a picture of creation. The universe was created by God. It's all one piece. Yes. I would say it's bigger because He fills all things. He fills all things. Um, if the universe is a garment, you're bigger than your garment. Right? I mean, that's a... And how do you put a size on God? I don't know that you can. I don't know that you can. It's another thing that we can't understand. God's a spirit. God's a spirit that fills everything. Uh, in Job, it says there's no place you can go where He's not there. You can't go to hell. He's there. There's no way, place you can escape from Him. You can't escape from His presence. And uh, so, so in, anywhere that there is in the universe, He's there. Um, and and it, it's mind-boggling. I heard a, a preacher preach a message up in Columbia Falls earlier this year. And he was going off on how big God is and how big the universe is. And he was showing how God made the heavens and the stars by the tips of His fingers. And he used a, a star that they found with the Hubble telescope and they measured the size of what they think that star was. And if, I I think the way he described it, if you took our world and you put it in that star, it would be a comparison of our world be a golf ball and the size of Texas. And that's how big that one star is. I mean, our world is pretty small in comparison to the stuff that's out there in the universe. And if you pay attention, you look at that, um, what it says there, it says an interesting thing there in Hebrews chapter 1. Look at um, verse 2. Half in these last days spoken unto us by His Son, who hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also He made the world... It's not what it says. It says worlds. Worlds. Now you could take that more than one way. You could take that the creation of the original 
earth and recreation of it. But, uh, or you could take it that He's made more worlds than just this world. We don't know. We don't know. I've always wondered about what has He not told us? <laughs> you know, that's something I've wondered about. What has He not told us? And that could, that could go... I mean, uh, there's more out there that's past us finding out. And... Uh, all right, let's go back to uh, John chapter 19. Verse uh, 25. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. Now, depending on how you take them, comma marks. Is there three or is there four ladies at the foot of the cross? Four. I mean, if I'm reading it right, there's four. Okay? And uh, so there, there are several things here to take note. Number one, how many disciples was at the foot of the cross? One. One of the twelves there. John. Now here's a humbling thing to think about. The ladies that ministered to Christ was more faithful to Him than His disciples. You ever think about that? You ever been in a church and looked out through that church and wonder why there's more of the old, older ladies than there is men? You know, this church is pretty even when it comes to... Actually, we're a little bit the opposite way. I think we got more men than we do ladies um, in our church. But that's not the norm. That's not the norm. Norm, you'll, you'll have three women to one man. Normal church. That's the way it is. Ever wonder why that is? It wasn't much different at the cross. It wasn't much different at the cross. There's a lot of ladies. They're, they're not just because they're not the disciples. There's a lot of ladies that ministered. There was a band of ladies that ministered to the Lord that followed them. Y'all study that sometime. And uh, you look at these, and it's a little bit interesting if you study. These, there's uh, four accounts of the crucifixion and they mention it. You try to study the Marys in the Bible. You got Mary, Mary Magdalene. She was um, the one he cast out seven devils from. She's mentioned here. I think she's mentioned in this verse. You had... Uh, you have Jesus' mother. That's Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary, the mother of Jesus. Then you have um, another Mary here. She's Mary, the. Uh, you got Mary, the. Uh, the mother of um, Joseph. I think um, she had another place. It says she's the Mary of the mother of James the Last. Mary, the mother of Joseph. We're going to talk a little bit more about here in a second who she is and James the Last. You got her. Then you have Mary of Bethany, which is Lazarus' sister. Which sometimes I wonder if she ain't one of these others, too. If she ain't the same woman. Bethany. Then you have a Mary that lives in, uh, that's mentioned in Acts, that lives in Jerusalem. 
than is the mother of John Mark. You have that, Mary. So how many is that? That's one, two, three, four. That's five that looks like are different Marys in the Bible there. Yes, did I miss one? Um, the brothers are listed, but that wouldn't be James the Less. That would be James the Lord's brother. James the Less, there's two James that are his disciples. And one's referred to as James the Less. That's not his brother. There's three different Jameses. It looks like there's two different Josephs. There's two different Josephs. And that Mary, the mother of Joseph, is mentioned quite a few times there. Um... And that ain't going to work. The reason that won't work is because uh, Mary, the mother of Joseph, is mentioned with Mary, his mother, I think. And a couple of, I, well, I don't know. I, I'll have to go back and look at that to make sure on that one. I might be wrong on that. Um, but there is, there's a, if, if not, if you do make it Joseph, that means Barnabas was Joseph's brother. Take your Bible, look at, uh, yeah, look at um, Acts chapter, uh, Mary the mother, Acts chapter 4, verse 36. This is one of the ones I, since uh, I was going to get here, but we'll jump ahead a little bit. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, look at verse 6. Is, it, is that right? Acts 4, 36. I'm sorry. 36. Acts 4, 36. It says, And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed, what? Barnabas. So Barnabas' other, other name is Joseph. This Joseph is mentioned quite a few times, but he's always mentioned as the son of Mary. Well, who hangs around with Barnabas? John, Mark does. How did Mark know enough to write a gospel? Well, Barnabas and Mark was there. Maybe they weren't one of the twelve. I, for some reason, I thought it said somewhere that Barnabas was John Mark's uh, uncle or something. Somehow, does, he, did, does anybody yeah, know yeah, that? I, believe so. yeah. I, I couldn't find where that was. I couldn't find that. But I think you can make that connection with Barnabas. But he, Barnabas is one of the sons of Mary. Now look at, uh, let me... Uh, Look it up. I'll give you the references. I didn't write them down, but let me. I think there's two. One of the when it names his brothers, uh, Christ's brothers. One of their names is Joseph. But I think it's two different. It's talking about two different people there. Um, Joseph. See the the problem you run into is individuals in the Bible had multiple names. And then the other problem you run into is there was multiples with the same name. So, uh, so you got multiple James, you got multiple Johns, you got multiple Marys, and uh, you got, I think you got two Josephs, you got at least two Simons, you got Simon the Lord. Well, actually, you got quite a few Simons. There's multiple Simons. There's a lot of Simons. So, uh, which Simon is one of Peter's second names. So, you got to figure out which one it's talking about. Um, Joseph in Matthew 13 55 
you have a James and a Joseph and a Simon and a Judas. That's all the children of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Those are his brethren. Okay? So you have those. Then in Matthew 27, 56, it talks about the band of women standing afar off at the cross. It says, among which was Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of Zebedee's children. Now, we don't have the mother of Zebedee's children mentioned here in John. Unless the mother of Zebedee's children is... Who, what, who did it say that it didn't name? Mary's sister. Mary's sister's there. Alright? Now when you start comparing, so you got here, here the uh, band of women. You have Mary, the Lord's mother, is there at the cross. You have her sister, if I'm reading that thing right in John... You have um, Mary, the wife of Cleophas. Is that what it says? Mary, the wife of Cleophas. I didn't put that one on here. She might be one of the same ones. The same woman described in different ways. Right. She may be. She may be. Um... But here in Matthew, if you go to Matthew, uh, you have, um, if you go to Matthew 27, 56, you also have the mother of Zebedee is there in Matthew. So Matthew, you have one that's different. She's the mother of Zebedee. Or the, not mother of Zebedee, Zebedee's sons. She would be Zebedee's wife. Uh, that's James and John. The mother of James and John. Okay? Now it doesn't mention her name. It never mentions her name there. But there is some names that are mentioned in the other Gospels that is going to fit these women. Uh, look at Mark 15.40. Mark 15.40. There were also women looking on afar, among whom was Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James the Less and Joseph. So there it adds as James the Less. So we know that's not James the Lord's brother. James the Less is the other James of the disciples. There's two James as his disciples. That's how you know that one's not the Lord's brother. It's different. And then it names one of the women. This woman's name is Salome. So now you got in Mark, you have this woman named Salome. Now she's, that's not uh, Mary of Cleophas, that's not Mary the mother of Jesus, and that's not Mary of Magdalene. That could be the name of the mother of James and John. Huh? Well, and John is mentioned as the aunt. Now, what would that as the sister of Mary? But the sons of, but who's not mentioned in John? Salome's not mentioned, nor Zebedee is mentioned in John. Now, if you go by deduction, what you have is this: you have the mother of James of John. Her name is Salome. She's a sister of Mary. That would make James and John Jesus' cousins. And uh, you start seeing some of these connections. Now, so far I haven't found anything that would say that that woman, that's not the same woman. That's Loam and it looks like it's the same woman. That's, uh, that's that fourth woman. Her name that gives the name there. But you have to kind of study the names of the other disciples. 
Now, uh, with Barnabas, Barnabas is, uh, that's Paul's companion. He was in the Lord before um, Paul. And he looks to be the son of the Mary that stood at the cross, who was the mother of Joseph and James the Less. So he would be James the Less's brother. He wasn't one of the twelve. James the Less was one of the twelve, but he wasn't. But his mother was one of the women that ministered to Christ. Now, John Mark's mother also is a Mary. Now, which one she might be, if she's a diff, one of these, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. He has two different names. He writes the Gospel of, John, of Mark. He writes that Gospel. He obviously has a lot of first-hand knowledge or second-hand knowledge. He spends a lot of time with Barnabas, which would give him that second-hand knowledge um, if Barnabas was this Joseph that was the son of this Mary, that would mean that Barnabas was around Christ quite a bit in his ministry. Now, uh, my sis- now, I wish I could remember where it was, where it talked about, where it showed the relation of Barnabas and John Mark, because I think those two are related too. Was it, it was huh? Is that what, how, where it was? That's what I thought. It was Barnabas' sister's son. Okay. His that would make him his nephew. Okay. So that would be another connection. Uh, obviously, Mary was a very, very popular name in that time. <laughs> it would be like saying Jim Smith's son is, <laughs> you know. <laughs> that's, a, that's a popular name. And they had what makes it even more difficult is they had more than a lot of them had more than one name. Say so you get Simon, his name is you get Peter, his name is Peter, then his name is Simon, then his name is Cephas. Now there's three right there. Bar Simon Bar Jonas. Yeah, you know, four. And uh I think Moses' father-in-law has four different names they go by. We have three names. It's common for us to have three names. But then you throw in the nicknames. All right. So, so when it's relatives writing it, they know all your nicknames. <laughs> That's how you get all these names in the Gospels. All right. So here's my brothers. They're writing about me. Sam, Sammy, Sambo, Sam, Samuel, Eli, Witter. And I ain't going to tell you the other name. <laughs> I mean, you know, I got four brothers. I mean, three. <laughs> they, they, they come up with plenty of names for you, you know. So that's, uh, that's what you run into with this. But it is interesting to study. One of the things that I pulled out out of this is you have these ladies and they're very much involved in Christ's ministries. They minister to them. They're at the cross. They're beholden far off. They're very much in His burial and His resurrection and stuff. And if you study the ladies that are in Christ's ministry and stuff, they are very much, as very much involved almost as the disciples are. And so, so that's a, you, you need that. That's in the church too. It's very much that way. The yeah, godly mother goes a long ways. She goes a long ways. Has a huge influence. Alright, uh, let's go ahead and take a break there.